These taillights from V-Land can really change the way your golf looks. But if you guys clicked on this video, you guys know that these aren't plug and play like V-Land says. So I'm gonna show you how to make them work like this. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. It's later in the day as you can tell. And a couple of videos ago, I posted about these V-Land taillights and installing them on my Mark 7 Golf. And ever since I posted that video, I've had a ton of you guys reach out and ask how to get the amber turn signal to work. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and undo all that work and then I'll show you guys how I did it. Just out of curiosity, after doing all the wiring back to OEM and disconnecting the two that jump between the two inner taillights, let's see how it looks when we have it still coded to the car, but not with the wiring set up. So as you can see, this whole right side works, this left side, the inner taillight doesn't work. And when we unlock or lock the car, this side flashes the amber, this side, the taillight actually flashes Right now I'm gonna hook up VCDS, undo all the coding back to OEM, and then I'll go through step by step on how to get these taillights to work. All right, now we're completely back to stock. Let's see how the taillights work. So this is what you guys are gonna see when you guys lock your car. So this is the blinkers. When you turn it on, this is how it's gonna blink when you first plug them in and if you don't do any coding or any wiring. so. The turn signal is gonna be a flash like that. So nothing fancy, you don't get your amber turn signal or the sequential. So now I can go ahead and show you guys the coding and then the wiring in the back so that we can get the full functionality of these taillights. So I'm gonna be doing all my coding with VCDS. The process should be similar with OBD11. Just because VCDS is what I have, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. But again, with OBD11, should be pretty similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and VCDS, click Control Module, and then in this, we're gonna click 09 Central Electrics. You'll see all this pop up. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once it loads is click the Security Access here. Security Access, and you're gonna to wanna to type in 31347, and that'll give you access to change adaptations. It'll say Security Access Accepted. Then you can go ahead and click this right above Adaptations. And now we can start coding. So we have four lights that we're gonna be coding and I like to work in sections. We're gonna start with the left light and work our way to the right. The easiest way I found to do it is each light has its own code. For the outside left light, the code is LA71. I type that in here into the search. And now I have all the LA71 codes right in front of me. So with VCDS and OBD11, all the coding's in German. So I'm gonna go ahead and put what codes I'm clicking on and changing so you guys can follow along pretty good. But first we're gonna click on LA71, L-A-S-T-T-Y-P-20. We'll click on that one. And you'll see that it's stored value is 14 and then German words. We're gonna wanna change that 14 to a 34, which is LED and then more German words. And then we'll click do it and yes. And that's our first code done. So now we can move on to the next one. The next one is gonna be the code that ends with B20. We'll click on that. You'll see that says Blinken Links Hellface. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change that to just not active. Next code is gonna be the one that ends in C20. And we're also gonna to wanna to change that to not active. And if you're following along with this, it should be pretty simple, quick and easy. So that's all the coding we have to do for this taillight. Now we can move on to the next one and that code is RC8. So in the search bar, I'm gonna delete this, type in RC8. And we're gonna wanna click the one that ends with L-A-S-T-T-Y-P 21. Click on that one and you see that it's number 14. We're gonna wanna change that new value to 34. Next coding is the one that ends in B21. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and change that to not active and do the same exact thing to C21. Turn C21 into not active. Next coding we're gonna do is EF21, and we're gonna change this value from 28 to 10. And just like that, we're all done with the RC8. We can move on to the next one, which is HLC10. In the search bar, I'll type HLC10, and we'll start with the one that ends in LASTTYP23. And from value number nine, we're gonna change that to value 43. The next adaptation we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and change 
the one that ends in A23, from this to this one that ends in these words right here. Then the adaptation that ends in AB23, we're gonna change the value from 28 to 127. And then the adaptation that ends in HD AB23, we're gonna change the stored value from always to only if closed. Now we're all done with that lamp, we can move on to the next one, which code is HRA65. Hope you guys can see pretty well what I'm doing here, just in case you're not understanding what I'm saying. In the search bar, I'm just typing in the code that I'm telling you guys, and that will bring up all of these channels and all these adaptations that need to be changed. For example, on this, we need to change this code that ends in LASTTYP24. We need to change that from number nine. The stored value right here says number nine. We're gonna wanna go ahead and change that to 43. So these numbers make it pretty easy. If you don't know German, you can just go ahead and go off that number right there. Then we go to the code that ends in AB24, and we change this value from 28 to 10. We're done with HRA65. Now we can move on to RC6, and starting with the one that ends in LS, LASTTYP27, changing that value from 36 to 38. Next one is the one that's A27, from this to this one. The code that ends in AB27, we're going to change that from 127 just to 100. We're all done with RC6, now we're moving on to LC11. And we're going to change the one that ends in LASTTYP28 from number 9 to number 38. The code that ends in A28 from this to this. And it's really easy to get this one that ends in hell phase mixed up with the one that ends in dunkel phase. So just really pay attention to the end there, because if you do it wrong, it won't work. The last channel that we need to change is RA64, and we only have one code that we need to change in here, and that is the one that ends in LASTTYP29. We need to change from number nine to number 43. And that should be our last code that we need to change before we have to go mess with wiring in the back. So now that we did this coding, I'll go ahead and show you guys how the taillights work now, and then we'll move on to the wiring so that we can get the full functionality, and they're all done. So right now with the coding done, if we go ahead and turn on the lights, this outer one would be on, for our blinker, our reverse light's gonna blink on this side. On this side, all that's gonna happen is this brake light's gonna light up more and nothing's gonna change with these inner ones. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what harness we need to make between the two inner lights, what cables we need to switch between this right one and which ones we need to disconnect on this left one. And we're gonna start with this left side. So on this left side harness, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna go ahead and disconnect our tail light from the OEM connector. Now that we have this disconnected, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how we disconnect this one pin that we need to do. Forgot to hit record on this one. All you have to do on this one is pull out that gray wire and that's it. You leave the other two where they are, insulate the gray wire and shove it back in. Now that we're all done with that one, we can move on to the inner left tail light. So this inner left harness has a little bit more to it. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect it and we have to move around a couple more pins so not only do we have to move some of these wires on here, we have to add some wires that are gonna jump between the two inner tail lights. And I'll show you guys how to do that now. So same process here, we're gonna pull out this little connector right here, pull out that blue wire, move it into the middle right here, and we're gonna move this gray wire all the way to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you guys when I'm done. So now that we have the brown wire in pin two, the black and blue wire in pin three, and the gray wire in pin five, we're gonna wanna go ahead and add a jump wire into pin one and four that'll connect from this end to this end. And that's why I have these extra two wires. So instead of shoving them into this harness, I taped them up here and I'm gonna shove them into the back of the harness on the tail light, just into these pins, making sure they're making good contact. I'll leave a link down below to some Amazon connectors that you can just shove into here and it'll be a lot cleaner, but this is just what I have for now. So you're not gonna wanna move any of these pins on the right inner tail light, but our white wire here that goes into our pin four on this side, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and connect to our pin four on this side, which is the blue and black wire. And then our pin one, which is the orange that connects to the pin one on that side, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and connect that to the gray and red wire right here, which goes into our pin one. So I was troubleshooting and in the last clip I had this wrong. I had this jumper cables from the wrong pins on this side. So that brown one's on its own. Then I have a white wire going into where this white wire is. Yellow is on its own black is on its own and then I have this orange wire going into this green then that goes through the panel to this other side where the orange wire goes into where the brown wire is and the white wire goes into where the white wire is 
Now that we have those all jumped, we can move on to this one. And this one also just needs some wires flipped around. This side's pretty simple. We're just gonna wanna go ahead and move this gray wire from our pin four to our pin three. So disconnect it, undo that little clip, pull out our pin four, move it over to our pin three, push that clip back in, connect this, and we should be all good to go. Tuck that in. Now we can see if our taillights work. Now when we close this and lock the trunk, we have our amber turn signals working. And if we turn on the lights, we have our lights working here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys reverse and brake lights. Just like that, we have a step-by-step -step video on how to get these VLAN taillights working with the amber sequential turn signals. I really wish they were plug and play like VLAN says they were, but with a little bit of coding and a little bit of wiring, you can get them to work like this. It is just a little bit more work than plugging them in. If you guys did find this video helpful, please drop a like, it really helps me out. And if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, goodbye.